This is probably the most important Mac that Apple sells. It's the future of the cheapest and therefore most popular MacBook that you can buy. And specifically, this is the cheapest version of the cheapest MacBook because this is the base model. 1199 with 256 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM and the binned eight core GPU M2. And today we are gonna find out everything there is to know about this MacBook Air. We're gonna talk thermals. We're gonna talk performance. We're gonna conduct real world thermal tests to see how it performs in different situations. And we're also gonna get under the hood of this MacBook Air and see what Apple's engineering team came up with on the inside. This video has it all. So get subscribed, leave a like down below, and let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by RenderForest, an online platform where all your design tools are in one place. Whether you're working on a pitch deck, 3D animation, YouTube channel intro, birthday message, or dozens of other categories, RenderForest is the place to go. The animation that you just saw was made in just a couple of minutes with RenderForest. It's as simple as browsing through the dozens of templates and categories that you can choose from, and then customizing elements, colors, backgrounds, transitions, and more to fit exactly what you're looking for. Plus, you can work with one-to-one -one aspect ratios for Instagram or even vertical video for TikToks or Reels. RenderForest has the flexibility and the variety for whatever project you're working on, and it has the customization to really make it feel personal. Check out the link in the description below to take 20% off all yearly subscriptions, valid until October 31st. And now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so first of all, I have not been more excited to unbox a MacBook since... Okay, well, I guess since the previous MacBook Pros, which is only like one MacBook ago, but don't worry about that. This is a really important Mac for Apple because this is the one that people are gonna buy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look, I know the MacBook Air is the cheaper one, the base model, but this feels amazing. Oh my goodness, they absolutely killed it. This design generation for the MacBook is absolutely perfect. But the big $1,200 question with the base model specifically is, are you giving up too much to get this price point? Well, to find out, we gotta run through some benchmarks. First up, I wanna get an idea of how the binned M2 chip compares with the regular M2 MacBook Pro, as well as the old M1 MacBook Pro. In Cinebench, on the first run, we see a score of 8208, or just about 6% lower than the fan-equipped M2 MacBook Pro. That's a similar loss in performance compared to the previous difference in the M1 days, so not too surprising there. What doesn't bode well for us, though, is that just with this one run, we completely saturated the heatsink. I saw temperatures peaking at 104 degrees Celsius. So that does not bode well for the thermal torture tests that I've got lined up a little later in the video. But back to the benchmarks, next up we have the Blender Classroom CPU test, which is a similar test to Geekbench in terms of maxing out the CPU and running for a pretty long time. It falls similarly directly between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Pros, 4% slower than M2 and 6% faster than M1. But in a shorter benchmark, V-Ray, which runs through Rosetta 2, the Air actually outperformed the Pro, scoring 5,655. So what we see here is that in short bursty tasks, the CPU in the M2 MacBook Air is basically indistinguishable from the MacBook Pro. That's why stuff like V-Ray or Geekbench 5 is going to look identical, but when you start to actually run the system for longer and fill up that heatsink with all of the heat being produced, you're going to notice lower scores. But now we gotta talk about the GPU because the CPU obviously is the same number of cores, it's only difference is thermal. But here we actually have two fewer GPU cores on the base model. So the big question is, is the performance on this thing more akin to the eight core M1 GPU? 
First up, we have 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme, where we see a pretty proportional decrease given the fewer GPU cores. 5673 is about 16% lower than the regular M2. Moving over to GFX Bench in the Aztec high tier off screen test, we saw 91 FPS compared to 109 on the M2 chip and 79 on the M1 MacBook Pro. Now moving over to Blender in the BMW GPU render with Metal turned on, Lo and behold, it's right in the middle, 9% slower than M2, 16% faster than M1. This is super interesting, but it seems like Apple has pumped a little bit of extra juice into those eight cores, which gives it slightly more performance than even the not thermally challenged M1 MacBook Pro. So that's good to see. Now, finally, let's move on to a touch of video editing. We'll take our tried and true 10 minute 4K 60 FPS 8 bit clip and apply color correction. We see here that the MacBook Air took exactly three seconds less time to complete the render as compared to the MacBook Pro with the M2 chip. Export shows a similar story. This time it was one second slower than the M2 MacBook Pro. Even with no fan and fewer GPU cores, it looks like Apple is leaning on the CPU and that media encoder. And because they're not you know, completely 100% maxing out those things, they're not saturating the heatsink. So at least for 4K video editing, this thing does pretty good. So what we see overall is that the base model MacBook Air in terms of the CPU falls about four to 6% behind the M2 MacBook Pro. And in the GPU, it seems to be somewhere around 10 to 20% slower. But now I want to take a closer look at what is going on with the thermals of this device. So the opening procedure is actually pretty simple. You've got screws in each corner. You've got four clips here and here, and then it slides into these four screws. So you just pop those clips with a little spudger and then slide the case down. And these are the internals of the new MacBook Air. You can see we have a very large surface for heat dissipation here. In fact, the entire logic board is covered. So it looks like we actually have the whole width of this entire device dedicated to spreading heat around. So the question is, does this work? So to find out how it does, I ran Cinebench a lot of times. Remember on the first run we scored 8,208. Well, on the second run that score dropped to 8,031. That's a 2.2% drop. And then during the third run, well, CPU clock speeds are now down to 2.9 gigahertz instead of 3.2, and the heatsink is still totally saturated. So we saw a score of 7719. That's a drop of 4% from run two and 6% of baseline. But then I ran Cinebench one more time, and this time was the worst. We saw the score drop to 7161. That's a whopping 13% performance loss compared to the first baseline test. And the behavior of this MacBook while running through all of these four Cinebench runs was very interesting. During run three, a big chunk of the time we were sitting at like 85 degrees and during the middle part of run four, the CPU got all the way down to 75 degrees. That's a bit weird, right? Why are we running at 75 degrees on run four, the lowest scoring run when we saw temperatures as high as 108 before that? Well, what we're seeing here is thermal throttling. The CPU clock speeds at that point were all the way down to 2.2 gigahertz. We lost a full gigahertz there. And as a result, we're producing less heat, which gives more heat the chance to exit the system. But I'm not done torturing it yet because I run all of my benchmarks in a climate controlled setting. Every time you see me test something, I have this room set to 74 degrees and that's so that everything is comparable. But this is a portable laptop. It's designed to be used on the go. And so what if you find yourself in a situation where you're not in a climate controlled 74 degree room? Well, to find out, I headed up to the roof of my apartment building where it was 88 degrees and pretty sunny. I whipped out the MacBook Air and fired up Cinebench in this sweltering heat. And then I took a little nap. Unfortunately, my nap was cut short by my sweltering legs. And when I took a look at the temperatures, I saw that our system had gotten up to 108 degrees and the entire surface of the laptop was absolutely cooking. 
as was I. But then the weirdest thing happened. I looked down and I noticed that our temperatures were dropping dramatically. The CPU was down to 59 degrees Celsius, but the way that it had done that was by completely disabling all of the performance cores. 0% usage, and the whole system power draw was 1.8 watts. It was absolutely crawling. And when it finally finished, the score was 4887, almost half of our baseline result. So, um... Wow, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, obviously, I don't think that's a realistic scenario. I don't think there are that many people that are sitting out in 90 degree weather trying to export an 8K timeline or render something in Blender. But if you do need to use your system outdoors or do anything remotely power intensive in a hot area, that is definitely something that you might want to keep in mind. I mean, obviously this was an extreme example, but it thermal throttled so much that it disabled all of its performance cores. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy. Now take that test with a grain of salt, because as I mentioned, how many people are gonna be sitting out there just absolutely maxing their system in direct sunlight when it's 90 degrees out? Probably not that many. I couldn't even handle it. I was thermal throttling. So I don't necessarily blame this laptop for it, but that's just one of the trade-offs that you have to make with a fanless design. So I'm curious to know what you guys think of all of this, the internals, the performance, the thermal throttling, do you think the MacBook Air is worth it? Now, tomorrow I'm gonna have a more detailed comparison between the base model and the higher spec version that could potentially fix some of these issues. Better GPU performance, better SSD speeds, that could have implications for the rest of the system as well. We're gonna find all of that out tomorrow, so make sure to get subscribed. Now, my initial impression on just the base model MacBook Air is that honestly, it does what it was designed to do, and it does it pretty well. Obviously, this is not a powerhouse. It's something that can't run huge tasks for long amounts of time while sustaining that performance. But this is a great machine for short bursty tasks, light video editing, blender renders that only last a couple of minutes. So it remains to be seen whether this is the best value. We'll see if it's worth spending the $300 extra for the higher spec one tomorrow. And of course, make sure to get subscribed and leave a like down below so that you don't miss it. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.